Have you noticed this channel does not cover the day-to-day -day price action of any given collectible? For example, there isn't an expose on the last four bars of any given cryptocurrency or stock that you might be interested in. Certainly every now and then I'll concoct a wild theory about the potential price action, but price action in general is not a subject for this channel. Instead, what intrigues me is the intersection of weird. For example, in a video researching the surface level of ambassadorships, I found myself on a dirty country road that would eventually wind me all the way to anchor. From stake to anchor, or in that case, pure stake to anchor. Those are the kind of stories that interest me. And for a lot of people interested in the finer obscura of the financial grimoire, I am your milkshake. In today's episode, for an unusual look at the world, I'd like to present an argument that you maybe have heard, but perhaps haven't heard in quite this way. Let's consider the graphic that is appearing now on the screen. Care to take a guess at what this is? If you're thinking about a popular stock or cryptocurrency, you might be close, but consider the years. There wasn't any cryptocurrency in 2004, at least not like what we know of today. And if you look at the green dots, what do you see? You see a pretty severe price collapse in 2011. And yet the black bars suggest some sort of stable price action up and to the right. Okay, one more hint. Consider these two charts now together. If you're reviewing them, what do you see? I see some black squares, some green circles, and a blue line. And what looks like the left is a dollar amount. I see a spike on the blue line in or near 2015 and something rapidly quadrupled in price. Before I explain the next bit, we need to go back in time, but briefly. If we go back in time, you see, to when this milkshake was young, there was what we call the playground. It's a playground with a capital P. Now, when you're young, what people often forget is that there are certain rules and economics on playground. Sometimes that involves candy, but sometimes toys. And you know the funny thing about a toy, especially to this young milkshake, is that a toy is better than money for most. You could dare someone to go do something remarkably dumb, offer them a toy, and more often than not, something dumb, well, it would happen remarkably fast. So there is an argument, and one I happen to subscribe to, and why I think cryptocurrency, functionally, is not a pyramid scheme, and instead is something far more interesting. So let me put these two charts back up on the screen. So these two charts are the price data for two Transformer collectible toys. One is Devastator, in honor of the absolute chaos in the crypto markets recently. And the second is Starscream. Now, I mentioned before that this channel might open a collectible store, which if you're a long-term subscriber to the channel, you might have even said, quote, why in the world does the Poseidon guy want to open a collectible store? End quote. It's because I don't think the world of action figures is all that far apart from cryptocurrency. I'm not here to say that all cryptocurrency is a collectible toy. That does not make sense. I can already see the headlines about this channel connecting cryptocurrency to Beanie Babies, but that's really missing the point. There are some important characteristics of a collectible that we should all know. Let's start with the first one. What is a collectible? Simply put, a collectible is an item worth collecting. Are cryptocurrency tokens and coins worth collecting? What a question. If you watch this channel, there's a good chance you're on the side of, quote, I just gotta have them all. I gotta have all of them, all of them, end quote. But you know, there's a funny thing that happens the more you peel back the layers on what a collectible is and how that relates to the markets. You start seeing volatility in a very similar way to the cryptocurrency markets. For example, if you look at this chart, which shows the best and worst annual real returns from 1900 to 2012 over different types of collectibles. On the far left is a column showing art, stamps, violins, wine, stocks, bonds, bills, and gold, showing the worst return from minus 57%, minus 29%, with the lowest right around what looks like minus 15%, covering from years 1915, 1949, 74, 2011. We see from this simple table that there is no such thing as a safe investment, any collectible asset of any sort, given these charts. However, that too is flawed. There is one thing that's really easy to invest in that always pays dividends. So do you wanna know the most important investment that's not listed there? Well, it's simple. 
It's the investment into yourself. It's the one thing that always pays dividends. I know that sounds like something we'd like to play a violin to, so let's consider the violin. The violin as a collectible is a violin or say even a guitar. Did you know guitars are also collectibles? Even better, if you're talented, you can leverage that guitar or that violin to create a new art, a performance piece, or even add value to an existing musical track. And that's a key bit and something to consider. A collectible which enables utility. What else is a collectible where, with applied know-how, a transformative work of art could be created. Consider the cryptocurrency space. And you know where else music is made? Right here. Where here? This channel. This is Unusual Due Diligence. I am your host, Poseidon, god of the sea, and whose spirit brings to life this milkshake. In today's fresh episode, we link together the price action of action figures to cryptocurrency by way of the idea of cryptocurrency as a collectible. It's far from the full story, but it's certainly an unusual one to consider. Make ways, my friend.